So, dear colleagues, I would like to thank Professor Casali for inviting me to make this talk at this section at this session and I uh, would like to say that as of today I don't have a lot to say about what we currently are doing in Russia because the rare cancers uh, started this movement approximately 10 years ago I uh, in Russia I 20 years ago started organizing a network which is devoted to the sarcoma treatment, um, I mean soft tissue sarcomas. But we gradually came to the situation when the society of rare cancers is utterly important, or rare cancer society is utterly important. This is important not only for our patients, but also for the uh, physician society. Or community. Uh, the previous three presentations were devoted to the sarcomas and to the rare tumors of GI, and as well as the head and neck tumors. They demonstrated it to us how important it is to organize such professional societies, which would be working as an umbrella, uh, sheltering the professionals and patients under one auspices. So we made a first step forward, and Professor Casale witnessed it. He was uh, present. Uh, last year, we had an international day of rare tumors, of rare diseases. We uh, organized the first Congress devoted to the rare tumors, which was organized in Moscow. For three days, actually, I expected approximately 700, 800 participants, but in reality, we had over 3,000 participants. I mean physicians, doctors. And as a matter of fact, the importance of this pro uh, problem uh, brought them there on the one hand. On the other hand, the deficiency in knowledge even among the professional communities. They resulted in the greater number of participants. Thus, we made the very first step forward, which actually we are trying to um, uh, we are trying to move forward. So we created an NGO which is devoted to rare tumors. The head of this. Uh, organization is the chief uh, specialist of the health ministry of Russia, uh, uh, doctor of medical sciences, professor academician, uh, Dmitry Kaprin. So we uh, decided to have the following objectives and aims. So first of all, this is the improvement of services. Uh, to patients with rare uh, diseases, uh, rare uh, tumors in the territory of Russian Federation and CIS countries. So I would like to say that this in incorporates very well into the project of rare tumors uh, of European Union and uh, uh, rare tumors of Asiatic reg region, because as a matter of fact, we are just in between the European Union and the Asiatic part of the world. So I suppose it will be very much logical to uh, be an intermediary of this knowledge, bringing knowledge both to Russia and, CIA's, uh, former, and the CIA's countries. So I'm not going to uh, speak long about the uh, aims and objectives of our society. I suppose that it will be uh, pretty much the same as anywhere else in the world. So, and the three previous talks were devoted to them. Uh, they uh, covered what we need to do in order to understand what we can give and what we can bring to our physicians and uh, patients, how to root all these things and uh, where the expert centers should be located. Also, how the patient should be informed about all these logistics and about the uh, rare disease and about the optimal uh, ways of treatment and diagnostics. 
We uh, created a website which is uh, available in two languages. And we uh, selected this type of logo. I suppose that it's uh, going to be very interesting uh, to talk about the legend behind it. You can see uh, there is a white background, and uh, it's um, the rarest flower in the world. The petals, they uh, form a diamond. And the rare diamond, again, is the rarest gem in the world. Thus, in this particular anthem, or this uh, sort of um, uh, picture shows how rare the diseases that we deal with are, which, again, is very attractive to the physicians who would like to deal more uh, with that and also to the um, authorities, legislative and executive authorities, which, of course, must be uh, with uh, on the same um, uh, on the same uh, shore of uh, the river with us. So here you can see the uh, uh, organizations, I mean the uh, patients and the doctors' organizations with their own interests, their all stakeholders in the problem of rare tumors. We are going to be the umbrella that actually unites and shelters all of them. Also, it is very interesting to use our experience, which we have been accumulating for 12 years in Russia and CIS countries. You can see here the network of a West European sarcoma group, which includes oh, East European um, sarcoma group, which embraces uh, 14 institutions which can provide uh, all the volume of help and assistance to the patients, uh, all the volume of services. And uh, in the recent years, we have developed a platform of uh, just uh, uh, registering the patients. It's not just a register, but as a matter of fact, it's an option of a scientific database. If we just take um, RCTs as an example, this is something like an electronic CRF which actually uh, has all the data from the uh, moment of diagnostics up to the outcomes for the patient. Thus, uh, it can be used also as a tool for moving towards a better study or in-depth study of rare tumors. So then it will be much easier to calculate the detailed figures of morbidity um, of rare tumors in Russia because uh, the preliminary estimates as of today show the extrapolated data from the world statistics that in the Russian Federation it's approximately 7.5 million people. And I know very well that by definition of rare tumor, in the European Union, this figure accounts for six and uh, smaller for 100,000 uh, population. In Russia, this accounts for 10 per 100,000 by um, just law. So according to the definition, the percentage ratio will be higher. Now let's speak about our plans for the future. It's absolutely clear that this is a good uh, platform for international cooperation. I would like to thank our colleagues who always support us. A second thing that I would like to say is um, that uh, on the platform of our sarcoma uh, group, we would like to create a biobank not on sarcomas only, but for all the rare nosologies. And by itself, it is going to be a very good platform for conducting the scientific research, academic research and clinical research as well. 
And apart from that, it will allow us to set up expert centers, which I suppose we can uh, invite, which can invite qualified professionals, doctors, and experts in uh, different directions working in different uh, rare tumors and also patients' organizations, which in itself will enlarge the five-year survival. I liked very much the uh, one of the graphs that was demonstrated by Annalisa, if I'm not mistaken, where in the middle uh, there, are there is data from the European Union and 25-30% uh, of discrepancies of five-year survival depending on the country. So with this, I would like to thank you for your attention.